Chapter 18. Answer. Psalm 22. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. Now, after several hours of prayer and petition to his father, while enduring deep suffering and pain, Jesus speaks a final word of prayer to be delivered. He is near the end, and he petitions God to deliver his soul, his life. The crowd continues to chastise our Lord, but the war is nearly over. There is a final battle, yes, but the outcome of the war has been determined. It is all over but the dying. A victorious new life will miraculously follow. We can remember the words of Thomas Aquinas who said that Jesus was a saving victim, which sounds like an oxymoron, but it is accurate. A modern writer, Frederick Buchner, used the phrase magnificent defeat. It is both. Verses 20 and 21 are the last petitions of our Lord from the cross. He refers to the mockers and accusers by the animal names we've already studied. Jesus tells us uh, two more threats to his life and his soul. He has to be delivered from the sword and from the horns of wild oxen, images that both refer to severe piercing wounds. Less than 24 hours earlier, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus had been captured by sword-bearing soldiers. There was a scuffle between Peter and some of the squad leaders of the arresting party. Peter drew his sword and injured a servant of the high priest. But Jesus healed the man and rebuked Peter for even drawing his sword. The sword is the symbol of political power and military might, and it should have no place in the work of his disciples. Jesus did not only disarm his disciples, he disarmed himself too. Jesus possessed vast power and he demonstrated this throughout his ministry, but not now. He told the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane that he could at any moment appeal to his Father to dispatch an entire legion of angels to do his bidding. But now, on the cross, he is defenseless. He has surrendered everything. Hebrew names of animals and beasts are notoriously difficult to translate. But whatever specific beasts are mentioned in these verses, it is clear they are a dangerous threat. There are also some grammatical issues in the Hebrew that inform how we understand this section of the psalm. In some versions, verse 21 reads this way, Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen, you have answered me. Other translations have adjusted it to read, Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the hands of the wild oxen. Answered and rescued are the same word. Some translations of this verse remove all doubt that the time of prayer is over. They read, And he answered me. Jesus does not offer another petition or plea after verse 21. Regardless of how we translate the verse, there is a definite sense of turning in the psalm at this point. It appears that after hours of petitioning, Jesus knows that God has answered his prayer. Jesus has a strong belief that all will be well because God has answered him. He has been granted the answer to his prayer and he's ready to praise God and declare his name widely. His circumstances have not changed. He is still dying. The nail spikes are still shot through his wrists, the steel still buried deep in the timber of the cross. But praise, thanksgiving, victory, hope, and joy are filling our Lord's mind as he continues to pray through the verses of Psalm 22. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you, in your great power, 
have answered all of our questions on the cross. All of our hurt, all of our longing, all of our questions about God are answered in the cross of Jesus, dying for us. Lord, as we continue to contemplate the power of the cross, fill us with a wonder of your great love. And we bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And something to consider today. Why did Jesus disarm his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane? Does your translation of Psalm 22, verse 20 and 21, read like an answer has been given to Jesus? God bless your day.